Vincent van Gogh, a Dutchman and one of the world's most famous artists. It is estimated he produced over 2,100 artworks, of which about 900 were paintings, and most of these in the last seven years of his life. Today, his known paintings are scattered across the globe. A lot of his most famous works are to be found in some of the most prestigious museums in the world, but many are held by private collectors. It is very rare that long-lost Van Gogh paintings are unearthed. But we have a very interesting case that has arisen in Jakarta, Indonesia. Is this a long-forgotten Van Gogh painting that found its way to Indonesia during the Dutch colonial period? Let's explore further. This is one of Van Gogh's most famous paintings. It was created in 1888, and Vincent simply called it Bedroom in Arles. There were actually three versions of this painting, and what we are looking at here is the first version. Vincent painted his bedroom in the house where he was staying in the southern French town of Arles. I want to draw your attention to the paintings on the wall. There are two portraits on the wall to the right of the bed and what appears to be a landscape above the bedhead. The two portraits are most definitely known Van Gogh paintings. One is called The Poet, a portrait of Vincent's friend Eugene Bock, and the other is called The Lover, another of Vincent's friends Paul Eugene Milliot. So, one might assume that the landscape would have also been a painting created by Vincent and hung over his bed by the artist himself. But nobody has ever been able to identify this painting. But is it possible that this long-lost landscape that is depicted in the bedroom in Arles has finally turned up some 130 years later, and in of all places, Jakarta, Indonesia? This is a landscape painting that has been in the possession of the Ward Hanna family in Jakarta for three generations. Is this the landscape painting that hung on the bedroom wall in Arles? The evidence is not clear, there are several unanswered questions, and just a few contradictions, but let's examine what is known. First, let us take a closer look at the painting. It is clearly a northern European rural landscape. There are some haystacks to the left, and what appears to be potato farmers working near the haystacks. There are some buildings, maybe farmhouses and sheds, to the right of the haystacks, and towering over the buildings and haystacks are tall, heavily foliaged, dark green trees. The foreground of the painting is a red-brown muddy track leading away to rising ground, with a woman in the midground of the scene. Away in the distance on the hill to the right is a village with windmills. It is the golden sky that provides an almost majestic light over what is otherwise a somber and drab rural scene. The family believes that this painting was acquired by Joko Prawiro, who is the maternal grandfather of the current owner. Joko Prawiro fulfilled several significant roles in the establishment of Indonesia's first government after independence in 1945, and then went on to become a successful private banker. It is thought he purchased the painting in Jakarta 1952. But how would a Van Gogh painting have made its way to Jakarta? to then be purchased by an Indonesian banker in the 1950s. To establish this trail, we need to go back to an exhibition of Van Gogh paintings at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam in 1905. Here is the catalogue that organises the paintings by where Vincent was living at the time he painted them. In the category Noonan in Brabant, listed at number 12, is a landscape painting that was owned by someone called Franz Buffer. Noonan is in the Netherlands, and is where Van Gogh lived from 1883 to 1885. During this time he painted and sketched weavers, peasants, and farmers at work in the rural landscapes of the area. It is notable that the area suffered from much poverty during this period. But our story gets more interesting, because the Van Gogh landscape listed in this catalogue was purchased at this exhibition by a Dutchman called Willem Peiter Engineering. Willem's brother, Antoni Ingenieren, moved to Batavia, the Dutch colonial capital of Indonesia, and what is today Jakarta, in the 1920s. Could he have taken the Van Gogh landscape painting with him? The last known fact about this painting is that Antoni's son, also called Antoni, inherited the painting when his father died. At the time, he was an engineer working in Jakarta. So, 
Is this the painting purchased by Joko Prawiro in 1952? We can't be absolutely sure, except for one tantalizing fact. The painting that today sits in Jakarta, in the home of the Ward Hanna family, has a label indicating the owner of the painting, Franz Buffer, at the time of the 1905 exhibition, and a number faintly penciled on the back. It is the number 12, matching the catalog entry. Up until 2017, the family was completely unaware of the possible significance of this painting. But then around this time, a blind friend of the family was visiting, and when examining the painting with his hands, felt something in the carton at the back of the frame. Upon opening up the carton behind the painting, some labels and a sketch portrait were discovered. The labels seemed to suggest that this was perhaps not just some drab and dusty old landscape, but possibly a Van Gogh. As for the portrait, was this also by the same artist? And then the significance of the signature on the painting hit home. It was signed Vincent. The family approached a local art dealer, and he suggested that they contact an art dealer that he knew in the Netherlands. The Dutch art dealer was so intrigued, he flew to Jakarta to take a look in person. He suggested that the family submit the artwork to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam the custodian of the biggest collection of Van Gogh paintings in the world. This is where our story takes a disappointing turn. The painting was indeed transported from Jakarta to Amsterdam in 2019 and submitted to the Van Gogh Museum. However, the museum deemed the painting was not genuine. They stated that in their opinion, the painting was not in the recognized style of Van Gogh. However, the family was not to give up so easily. They took the painting to two noted experts in Europe. In March 2020, the painting was submitted to Professor Cohen Janssen at the University of Antwerp in Belgium. Professor Janssen used X-ray fluorescence, or XRF, to scan the painting, which allows not just the surface of the painting to be investigated, but also any layers of paint that may exist beneath the top coats. What was discovered was that the painting was in fact made up of many layers. The artist, or maybe artists, reworked the painting several times. And to add to the mystery, there were objects and details in the earlier layers that were covered up by later applied layers of paint and now no longer visible in the painting. For example, the woman near the road is seen to be carrying a bin, but the scam shows that in an earlier rendition now hidden, she was pushing a wheelbarrow. The scan also turned up additional buildings and people, a house with a tower, a cow with horns, a plowman with two cows, and several churches in the distance. The village with the windmills on the hill that can be seen in the current painting did not exist in earlier versions and were added later. Now this is not so unusual. Vincent is known to have reworked his paintings many times, often changing them completely by just painting over an earlier rendition, until he was satisfied with the final result. But there is one change that is particularly intriguing. The XRF scan detected that the artist's signature was changed, not once, but twice. The earliest detected signature seems to begin with a V and was painted over. Then there is a later signature that appears to have been erased. And finally we have the signature that is on the painting today, a red bold Vincent. The XRF scan can also indicate exactly what paints were used to create the artwork. The analysis indicated that there were certainly paints that would have been used by Vincent. But the painting also contains paint that would not have been available to Vincent, in particular the pigment titanium white. This is certainly an unexplained question when considering whether this painting is a genuine Van Gogh. The painting was also submitted to Professor Eric Postma at the University of Tilburg in the Netherlands. Professor Postma uses artificial intelligence to analyze paintings for style, content, and physical properties in an attempt to detect fakes. Although not conclusive, Professor Postma noted there was nothing to indicate this painting was a fake and could very well be a genuine Van Gogh. In the last few years, the owners of the painting have done further research and discovered some extremely interesting information. It is well known that Vincent often described his work in letters to his brother Theo, 
There is mention in not just one, but six letters from Vincent to Theo of a landscape painting that has never been identified. The references in the letters suggest that the painting in question may have been worked on numerous times over an extended period, and may have traveled with Vincent on trips to Paris and when he moved to Arles. Oh, and there is one more fascinating twist to this story. There is a human hair trapped in the paint of this artwork sitting in Jakarta. Of course, there is no record of Van Gogh's DNA. After all, he died in 1889, but it is fascinating to think that if this painting is a genuine Van Gogh, and this hair belongs to the artist, then this could very well be a hair from the head of one of the world's most famous artists. So where does this leave us, and the family who still have the painting in Jakarta? After the studies performed by Professor Janssen at Antwerp University, and Professor Eric Postma at the University of Tilburg, the owner of the painting returned to the Van Gogh Museum and presented the additional findings and research. However, the museum remained unconvinced. If anything, they found the evidence resulting from the XRF scan and the presence of titanium white pigment to be compelling evidence in support of their position. They stated that the most Van Gogh-like element in the painting the Montmartre-style barns and windmills in the distance contains titanium white, which suggests these features were added in the 20th century, well after Van Gogh's death. So, maybe this painting is not a genuine Van Gogh, and sometime after Van Gogh's death was altered to fit the story of the mysterious missing landscape painting. But just as compelling are these facts. The famous bedroom in Arles' painting seems to contain a landscape painting that has never been identified. There is a mysterious landscape painting that is mentioned on six occasions in letters from Vincent to his brother Theo. These letters seem to suggest the painting was started while Vincent was living in Noonan, but may have been reworked many times, and the latest changes may have been when Vincent was living in Arles. A Van Gogh landscape painting was owned by Franz Buffer and exhibited at the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam in 1905, where it was purchased by Willem Peiter Ingenieren. We also know that the painting was passed to Willem's brother, Antoni, because Antoni left it to his son. And we know that Antoni moved to Jakarta in the 1920s, and that his son was an engineer in Jakarta in the 1950s. So it is highly plausible that a genuine Van Gogh landscape painting was taken to Jakarta. But this is where the trail gets a little murky, not surprising given the Japanese occupation of Indonesia from 1943 to 1945, and then the Indonesian struggle for independence against the Dutch between 1945 and 1947, which explains why this painting faded from view. The question is did Joko Prawiro, a successful and well-connected private banker, acquire this painting in 1952. The painting in Jakarta does have the label on the back that references the owner Franz Buffer, and also the number 12, which links it to the catalogue of the 1905 exhibition. It is, of course, the discovery of these by the family in 2017 that brought this fascinating story to light. Time will tell whether it can indeed be proven that this is in fact a genuine painting of the famous Dutch master. Vincent van Gogh.